Greetings, Earthlings. I'm Eric Taylor, a.k.a. The Extraterrestrial, and I'd like to welcome you back to Camelot Correspondence College. In this series, we explore Dark Age of Camelot from a top-down angle in an effort to aid new players, enrich returning ones, and possibly hone some veterans. Enrollment is always open, so submit your application by subscribing to the channel and click the notification bell so that you never miss a lesson. Also, we'd love if you'd help grow the community, so be sure to share this video with any friends you have that might find it interesting. Now, class is in session. Let's get into it. A quick recap. We're hard at work on Unit 1, Choosing a Realm. Here we discuss and give an overview of each of the three realms, with broad overviews of the classes, races, and zones that make each of them unique. Today's lesson is on the final realm, Midgard. After that, we'll do a short appendix lesson on the Mahler, and then it's on to Unit 2. To recap the unit so far, we've covered the Arthurian-influenced Albion and discussed the Celtic-flavored Hibernia. Today, we're headed north, so wrap your mind in its warmest winter cloak, because we're talking about Midgard. Far to the north lies the land of towering glacier and frigid fjord. It's a harsh realm with wicked winters, and it's home to a diverse group of people. These people have set aside their differences and sworn fealty to a banner as blue as the ice upon its permafrosted plains. This is Midgard. Midgard's contingent of races are by far the most diverse of the three realms. First, we have the humans who settled on the frigid northern tundra, the Norse. These stout and strong humans have been hardened by the harsh winters of their chosen northern home. They've survived and indeed thrived due to their adaptability, and it's that self-same trait which makes them an excellent choice for both might or magic, and as such they can play 12 of Midgard's 15 classes. In juxtaposition to the young humans, we have Midgard's oldest race, the dwarves. These stalwart devotees of Midgard's elder gods hail from caverns deep beneath the earth and bring a knack for fighting, healing, and hunting to bolster Midgard's forces. As the dwarves emerge from the caves, the trolls have come down from the mountains to join the Tri-Realm conflict. These behemoths with their rock-like skin are possessed of near supernatural strength and constitution and are premier members of Midgard's fighting forces, though some few do choose to embrace ancient magic as well. In contrast to the hulking behemoths of the realm, we move now to its most diminutive members. The kobolds, heralding from their mysterious and forbidden undercity, have surfaced to bring their speed and cunning to the realm. These mischievous blue-skinned creatures make excellent scouts, but their natural dexterity also makes them formidable casters and a staple of Midgard's mystic line. The casters of Midgard are not made up purely of kobolds, however. Indeed, the Frost Elves, distant relatives of the dark elves known as the Svartalfar, have allied themselves with Midgard's forces in an effort to protect their homeland. These gray-skinned people have an affinity for the mystic arts of Midgard due to their reverence and piety. The Valken are a tribal people who further fill Midgard's ranks. After staging a revolt against the Morvolt on their home island of Aegir, these bestial-looking men have sworn fealty to the hammer banner of Midgard. They excel at fighting as well as stealth, and it is from them that the Midgardian casters learned to call upon the magic of the bones. Just as the other two realms, Midgard is home to one of the three tribes of Minotaurs. The Urus de Frang have found their lot with the blue faction, and they bring their combative nature to bolster Midgard's front line. As we've mentioned in previous lessons, each of the three realms pulls their flavor and aesthetic from different historical sources. Albion from the Arthurian tales, Hibernia from Celtic legend, and Midgard from Norse mythology. Norse myth is full of battles, and it's no surprise that Midgard's tanks are renowned throughout the Tri-Realms, being able to smoothly move between one-handed and two-handed versions of weapons without requiring special training. The warrior is the quintessential fighter of the northern kingdom. These combatants worship Tyr, the Norse god of battle, and wear the realm's heaviest armor and wield sword, axe, hammer, and shield with unparalleled prowess. These titans charge fearlessly into battle with a roar that sends chills down the spine of their enemies. At their side, 
we find the berserkers. These terrifying fighters have chosen to armor themselves more lightly than many of their brethren, in exchange for the ability to wield two weapons and move more easily into positional for devastating positional attacks. Berserkers also can enter a state known as the Berserker Battle Rage, taking on the ferocity of a Vendo and boosting their combat damage for a short time. The ferocity of the Berserker is legendary, but so too is the vicious and primal fighting style of the Savage. These fighters aren't often interested in mastering complicated weapons, but instead are known to affix simple, sharp, or blunt implements to their hands and give in to their inherent savagery, swinging with wild abandon in a combat style that is simple, but devastating. Midgard's front line is bolstered by a set of hybrid classes, first of which are the Thanes. These disciples of Thor channel their devotion to their god into devastating displays of lightning and thunder while being formidable fighters in their own right. The battles of Midgard are filled with glory, and it is the Skald who tell of those glorious battles. They sing songs and recite poems to bolster their allies. Yet Skalds are not mere observers, but with heavy armor and weapon in hand, charge into battle beside their brothers and sisters to live the tales themselves. Next are the Valkyrie. These handmaidens of Odin are trained to fight using both melee and magic. In addition, they have access to powerful healing, which makes them staples of Midgard's fighting force. The support line of Midgard keeps these vicious frontline fighters alive, and that backline is built on the foundation provided by the healers of the realm. These followers of air channel powerful healing magic, strong buffs, and potentially most devastatingly of all, vicious crowd control spells, all in the name of their goddess and all for the glory of Midgard. In conjunction with the healers are the shaman. These casters are patrons of Ymir, the ancient god upon whom the very land of Midgard was built. They channel their power through that earth to empower and heal their allies or to shear and disrupt their enemies. In addition, they can call upon a vicious variety of magic known as cave shamanism, which specializes in debilitating diseases, damage over time spells, and other combat magics. The support line of Midgard is rounded out by the warlock. These spell weavers utilize an unorthodox form of magic and are as adept at preventing death as they are at dishing it out. With curses, hexes, and wishcraft, they are the first of several caster classes that Midgard has to offer. Standing at the head of that line are the Rune Masters. These worshippers of Odin have devoted their lives to the manipulation and utilization of ancient runes of power to craft lethal manifestations of firepower to lay low the enemies of the realm. Next are the Spirit Masters, who call upon undead spirits of fallen Midgardians to aid them in battle. In addition to their summoning capabilities, they can call upon the power of their patron goddess Hel, queen of the underworld, to destroy their foes. Yet where the Spirit Master calls upon a single spirit to aid them in battle, the Bone Dancers can command an army of skeletons by infusing their bones with magic. Through a powerful pet called the Commander, these casters command an ancient form of magic that allows them to turn numerous pets loose upon their enemies, while also channeling destructive magics of their own. No realm would be complete without a team of classes who can perform reconnaissance and gather intelligence, all while remaining unseen. These stealthers are essential parts to each realm, and Midgard is no exception. It's here that we find the hunters, followers of the Norse goddess of the hunt, Skadi. They wield bow, sword, or spear with lethal precision, and can even call upon the beasts of the realm to aid them in battle. Yet where the hunter specializes in distance, the Shadowblade prefers to get in close. Trained in the arts of stealth and subtlety, these assassins can strike with critical accuracy, using poisons to further complement their attacks. While they are trained to dual wield as the assassins of each realm are, what sets them apart is their ability to lead with a wicked two-handed strike of immense power, which can sometimes lay an opponent low before they even have a chance to react. Though the environs of Midgard are harsh and unforgiving, they're no less beautiful and no less dangerous than those of any other realm. Adventurers who complete their tutorial will journey to the Vale of Mularn, which lies beneath the looming shadow of Midgard's capital of Jordheim. Yet, as their skills and power grows, adventurers can find themselves within the fire giant kingdom known as Muspelheim, or within the frigid wastes of Romerick.
Or perhaps they will challenge Galpanuva, the wolf dragon, and her Dracul servants down in Malmahus. Then there's always the island of Agar, home of the Valken, where even after the rebellion, the brutal race known as the Morvolt still pose a threat. All of these areas and more await those brave enough to explore Midgard. The realm of Midgard is mighty, and it boasts a large player base. While many would argue that Hibernia is home to more players at the time of this recording, Midgard is very close. A battle group has fielded most knights out on the frontier during both EU and US prime playtimes. Borgio is a Twitch streamer, whose link will be in the description, and he frequently plays on Midgard during the EU primetime. If you're looking for a guild on the Awain server, as of the time of this recording, you can reach out to the representatives of the Hammered Guild, or to Fellowship of Midgard. As always, I recommend players on Gaharis reach out to the Survivor's Guild. Midgard is a proud and stalwart realm with a strong community of players. It's the first realm I even got a character on to level 50, and I have nearly every class at 50 on Midgard. Due to its strong BG presence, its large population, and a community dedicated to helping people get better, Midgard is a great choice for new players. Though, as I've discussed in the past two lessons, so are either of the other two realms. As we conclude Unit 1, I would like to illustrate the idea that there is no right or wrong choice of realm. I've offered you these rundowns so that you can make an educated decision for you. In the end, my strongest suggestion is whatever realm you play on, find a group to play with and become friends with them. Dayok is an MMO, and it's always more fun when played with others. A short appendix lesson will be coming soon on the Universal class, the Mauler. From there, we'll move on to Unit 2, where we'll cover game basics and begin to establish a skills foundation for the game as a whole. Stay tuned also for enrichment courses, which will discuss things such as finding a guild that fits you, as well as discussions on various playstyles. Thank you for watching and for your support of Camelot Correspondence College. More videos and lessons are on the way, so please be sure to subscribe and share with your friends. Also, keep your eyes out for our alumni Patreon coming soon, which will help keep the Camelot Correspondence College doors open. Until next time, though, I've been Eric Taylor, a.k.a. The Extraterrestrial. Ravage the frontiers, protect the realm, and as always, strive for peace on Earth, Earthlings.